five hard truths about songwriting no one warned me about. All right, my name is Richard Shepard. I'm the owner of the Heroes of Music Institute. Number one, if you want to master songwriting, master music theory. Yeah, the theory part is the the piece of that phrase that I, I really want you to consider. Traditional music theory is fantastic, and the more you master that, you will accelerate your ability to create all kinds of songs. So, for example, if you don't know... If you don't know that the A minor is the relative minor of in the key of C, C then maybe you need to start digging in to some music theory. The five dominant over C. What does that mean? What is the five chord? What is that? What's that cadence? What's the four to one sound like? Right? What's a two, five, one? Master music theory and you will become an indestructible songwriter. Now, when it comes to music theory, you can come up with your own theories. <laughs> Nuno Bencourt doesn't read music, but he has his own theory of music. John Mayer not, has his own theory of music, okay? Develop your theory about what music is. Learn some fundamentals because those things are powerful and tested over thousands of years. And then you, they're, they're going to be completely different in your hands. Master song, you want to master songwriting? Master music theory. Number two, not every song you write is for you. I have a song on my new album right now that is... It's not, it's not for me. It's for this, this young lady artist that I know it's the minute she hears it, she's going to be like, that's perfect for me. All right. But I, you know, it's, it's on my album, but I know it's perfect for her. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're writing your songs. Sometimes you may prejudge a piece of music without knowing that it's, it's not for you. It's for somebody else. Be a vehicle. Be a vehicle for someone else's success. Their success will be your success, as long as you get the paperwork together, okay? That's a separate conversation, okay? Not every song you write is for you. Number three. Oh, this one's so painful. Demo. <laughs> this one's painful. Demo your songs cheaply before paying an expensive studio to record your music. It should work. Your song should be able to work on a voice memo. It, I don't want a band practice. Just place it in the correct spot where it can capture all the instruments. If you're in a band, it should work on a single, on a, on a, on a cheap recording. Okay. Whatever you're using a four track, your, your, your phone, your, your laptop, whatever, demo it yourself. If, you really want to know if you've got something. It should work in its rawest form. Okay? I wish I would have listened to... <laughs> I wish I would have listened to this advice several years ago. When I paid a studio so much money to record this, this group of guys that I was playing in a band with, I was just... I hadn't demoed the songs, but the energy I thought was correct. Ah. Uh. I had some successes in that situation, but I also had a lot of failures, okay? Failure is part of success, okay? Number four, learn to count your syllables in your melody creation. Let's take something we've been singing since we were really, really small. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Seven, symbol, seven syllables. How I wonder what you are. Okay, that... That simple concept of understanding how many words, how many syllables you have in a particular line is imperative because it'll keep you from meandering if you can learn to match your lines syllable for syllable. Now, some genres, 
you can you can be more flexible in in Latin soneo. You can you can riff on top of the coro. If you're in hip hop, you can you can Eminem fits as many syllables as he can. And he rhymes within a rhyme, whatever. But when you're talking melody creation, to get a basic framework, count your syllables. See if that helps. If it's something you haven't thought of before. And when it comes to uh, counting your syllable, counting your syllables, the next one, number five, is master your melody. Where is your melody landing in the rhythm? So in that example for twinkle, twinkle, twinkle is coming in on the one. Twinkle, twinkle, it's coming in on the one. On on uh, no woman, no cries, boom. No woman, no cry, one, two. He's coming in on the two for that melody, okay? And he's pretty consistent with that. Nothing is forbidden in music, okay? If you want to stretch these rules, break these rules, feel free. Nothing is forbidden. But if you're looking for some structure to give your songwriting uh, some framework, consider mastering your melody. Intervals. Somewhere over the rain. That right there, that's an octave jump. Boom, boom. If you don't know, an octave is a unit of an, an interval. It's an interval is a, a measurement between two notes. So if you don't know your intervals, again, going back to my first point, then maybe you need to start mastering music theory. <sighs> yeah. Where's the melody? What beat is it landing in? Learn your intervals, master your melodies, learn your intervals. It's going to make you a titan. Now, I have a new book coming out called Lead Guitar for Songwriters. So if the first, the first chapter, the first week of the book is nothing but music theory. So if that interests you, email me and I'll put you on the pre-order list, well, the, the waiting list, where it's, it's not done yet. I'm still in the final stages of it. But if that interests you, email me and say, interested in the subject line, and I'll let you know when the book is ready, Lead Guitar for Songwriters. All right, I hope this video was helpful. My name is Richard Shepard. I'm the owner of the Heroes of Music Institute. Stay great.